We all love the sound of money, and a $1,500 sign-on bonus sounds even better. That's right, Belicio Foods of Jackson is offering a $1,500 sign-on bonus to new employees. Receive an extra $100 your first six weeks, then $400 after day 90, and $500 after day 180. Don't wait. Apply online at BelicioFoods.com slash careers today. That's BelicioFoods.com slash careers. Come work for a company who truly values their employees. Come work for Belicio Foods. Welcome to the morning show right here on Main Street TV. And look who we found, our good buddy Amanda. Just wandering the halls. <laughs> like, we're not kidding. <laughs> so here's the deal. Literally, we found Amanda wandering the halls and we said, well, while you're here, how about you stop by and talk about what's going on sure. with you? <laughs> Why not? And so she was like, yeah, I can stay for a few minutes. So we didn't really have a guest today. And then we are going to go back to, um, and I don't think that you've seen this. It's really interesting. We went to uh, tour the the Ohio State Highway Patrol post oh, yeah? a while back, maybe a month or, or two ago. Okay. And it was so much fun. And they had an open house. And we got to see, like, um, you know, the police dog and, like, the motorcycle Ooh. from Columbus came down. Is this and... why you were so obsessed with chips recently? Kind of, Yeah. <laughs> So we were, I don't know how we, how did we get in a discussion of chips, chips the other day? I don't day? know, but, um. And then it was on. We want to know, is it, are you a, a, are you a Punch fan or a John fan? Yeah. Are you a Punch <laughs> fan or a John fan? <laughs> And uh, so I happened to be in Columbus the other day, and I'm flipping through the channels, like some rando weird channel, and Chips comes on, so I'm sending Amanda a message. I'm like, look! <laughs> and, and you know what the funny thing is? Right after you sent me that message that you were watching the old Chips, yes. I happened to walk into my son's room, and he was watching the Chips movie. No! Yes, and I didn't have my phone, so I couldn't get a picture of it <laughs> in time, but yeah. <laughs> So funny. How coincidental is that? Th that's pretty weird. <laughs> like someone's trying to tell us something. <laughs> so you went sure. to our very own chips here. In, uh... So we did, yeah. <laughs> so we toured the Highway Patrol post and did a really fun video with them. And they were so gracious as to have take time out of their day to show us around. And I got to sit in the SWAT vehicle. Oh, wow. Yeah. It has little holes where you stick the guns out and stuff. It's legit. It's like super legit. <laughs> James and I are like, what are those holes for? He's like, oh, well, that's, you know, where you, and I, we're like, oh, oh, cool. So anyway, here we go. But but we'll get to that in a minute. But our sweet Amanda was literally stopped by. And so <laughs> we thought that it would be fun for you to stop by and sure. just check in for a little bit, yeah. see how you're doing. I'm doing well. I'm doing very well, actually. Good. I, I am. Somebody posted on social media the other day, though, that there's only like 130 days left in the year or something like that. And it really made me very sad. Isn't it? I don't understand. Like, why Why are we looking forward to December? I don't. Why are we not living in the moment? The last days of summer are here. Fair. Fair statement. Right? And especially when it's, um, especially when it's <laughs> summer, you don't want it to, like, go away, like... Exactly. I don't want to see snow and no. icky. No, no. no. I, I'm I enjoying the summer. But I did notice the last few days have been very cool in the evening. You do get to that, like, time. And it's always, like, around back to school, I feel like. Or, yeah. like, those first couple football games where mm -hmm. you start to get a little bit chillier yeah. in the evening. You just feel – and it just smells different. It does. It absolutely does. You can just smell fall coming. Yeah. And that's where I would like. And it's August second. I know. Hey, shout out to my little brother. By the way, today is his forty first birthday. <gasps> Happy birthday! Yeah. yeah. Not I that he's watching in Thailand. I right was going to say he's in <laughs> Thailand. So, <laughs> I mean, he could be he, watching. He could be, but you know, it's like nine o'clock at night there. So yeah. But happy yeah, birthday sure. anyway. Yeah, exactly. Wonder what he's doing on his forty first birthday in Thailand. Well, I called him last night because you know it was. I called him at eight o'clock last night and it was eight o'clock in the morning for him. Okay. So it was, it was the new day for him. And, um, he so was weird. I know. Right. It's like, good morning. Happy birthday. <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> <laughs> so he was planning, uh, he was planning some outings and a nice lunch and I think a soccer game and good. So yeah, 
That'll it's be tough. awesome. Yay. Well, how's everything going at the um so you got a new job at the bank I at did. um so yeah. if you all don't remember, our sweet mm-hmm. Amanda went to Vinton County Bank and um uh so then you were at the Jackson Banking mm-hmm. Center, which by the way is just Bad A if you haven't been there. Yeah, it's pretty fabulous. It's um, so I mean, fabulous. state of the art. You, you know, you so can good. still you can still talk to a teller. You can yeah. walk up and, and see a teller, but we have all of these um like electronic stations with iPads where if you want to learn how to, you know, have online banking, you're not comfortable with it, um, you can go walk up to those and and we can show you right there how to do it. It's so really, really cool. It's a beautiful facility. Mm-hmm. Um um, and, um, it just has to be such a great place to go to work, but, it is, uh, it is, but we're getting, we're actually building another yes. branch, um, in the MacArthur. Yes. Uh, so MacArthur is our, is our flagship, um, branch. It is where it all started. Mm-hmm. And, um, I don't know if, if you haven't been to the MacArthur branch, it is very unique in that, um, it's kind of a hodgepodge of buildings that have been, that were in the downtown and then have been connected and it's kind of a maze to walk yes, through and we've is. got that historical building, but we just felt like the citizens of MacArthur, they, you know, they deserve a full service branch where the drive through is connected to the building yes. and, um, you know, they have all the amenities that the other branches have. So we are um, building a brand new building. Um, hopefully this fall we'll start, if not, maybe next spring, but uh, where the McClure's restaurant yes. was. So that will be a, a kind of right across building. the street, right? It is. It's right across okay. the street, and we are keeping the building just for all of those who are history buffs and <laughs> hate to see. Don't worry. <laughs> hate to see those buildings get torn down and, and those kinds of things. We are not tearing anything down. We are actually going to keep the building that we're in, and we're just going to do a little bit of renovations and make it just administrative and operational employees in that in that building. Awesome. So, yeah, so it'll be good. Give everybody a little room to roam as well, and um, That's right. but also um, then add that state of the art, as mm-hmm. you said, bank and and all the amenities. That's right. Um, that we have here in Jackson, yeah. which is amazing. Right. Hey, and you know we talk. People are talking about rates co- going up, but guess what? Deposit rates are going up too. So if oh. you have money that you're investing and you want to put it into CDs and things like that. CD rates are going up too. Finally. So. Finally. <laughs> what do I do with this? Nothing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I can remember when I started in banking back in, you know, like 1999 and CD rates were like, that was what you, that's what you oh, published were CD rates because yeah. they were like 5%. <laughs> now it's 0. 0.00023. <laughs> You're like, woo. Now Thank we are God up, for that. We are getting up to 1% oh, and above well, now. There so. you go. Thank I, God for that the, I seven cents I get. <laughs> yeah. I expect that to rise a little bit too. Yeah, it will. So. Yeah. And it's just all, you know, everything needs to even out. And um, that would be an interesting program to do to explain um, what the feds are doing in raising interest rates, right. things like that, to try to balance out the economy and, and whatever. Maybe we can do that sometime. Yeah, Get some folks in here sure. and explain it because it is very complicated. It is. It is very complicated. Mm-hmm. Very. And this is why <laughs> I only passed economics on the bell curve. And this is why I'm in marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh shoot! But no, you are you have done a fantastic job there. And then they have um, since kind of moved you around to um, a huge like marketing position, right? So, so I'm the marketing director. Okay, um, we have four people on our team. Um, the three that were there before, um, they've been together for nine years, and they do a fabulous wow. job. That's um, awesome. Yeah, they they all do a great job. They are located in various places within our footprint. So Justine's in the Chillicothe market and Austin um, is in Logan, Lancaster area. Um, and then um, he's from Logan, but he lives in Lancaster. And okay. then our very own Brandy Betts, uh-huh. who is in the MacArthur office. So very um, good. You know, Brandy's a pretty well-known person yeah. around the Jackson and Benton counties. So um, she's part of our marketing team and, and does a great job. And so I'm very, very blessed to be and um grateful to be part of that team so yeah absolutely and um seems like a lot of fun promoting such a wonderful organization yeah, you know absolutely you know we talk about giving back to the community and and just being a part of the community 
And Vinton County National Bank, it truly is just a community bank. It's, you know, it's what the old community banks used to be like. You know, but it with just all the is, modern but stuff with now, all of the modern stuff that is exactly right. You know, exactly and I was right. just talking to a friend about that the other day of of how wonderful you know Vinton County is that they still treat you like a person mm-hmm. and a human, and you know you can right. still walk in and say hi to to you know the the higher ups there, sure. and you know their offices are out and about, and you you know the tellers are know your name, and it's just so nice. Yeah. Is teller yeah. the right? What are what is the word now? Personal banker. Personal banker. The personal ba- <laughs> the personal bankers are so sweet, <laughs> and they put up with us when um, when you know things go awry because yeah. Jamie gets a little confused sometimes when he does deposits. <laughs> that happens. That yeah. happens. Uh, speaking of the community stuff here, this was just in the news. Yes, the donation Benton County Bank made to the uh, MacArthur Christmas Light Fund. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of good things going on in MacArthur and um, the Christmas lights in the park. Um, just made a contribution to that. Um, you can see our branch manager, Heather, there on the right. Um, and then the president of the bank, Mark Ursulin, on the left. So, um, yeah, you know, definitely being a, it's very important to be a part of the community, not just, sure. to, not just to give give money and to and contribute that way, but to actually be a part of the community. Sure. So absolutely, you'll see. You'll see, and that's what I was doing today, actually, when I was wandering the hallways. <laughs> like we're not lying about this. <laughs> I was picking up T-shirts <laughs> that we purchased so that our employees can go out in the community and volunteer. So, see, there you go. It comes yeah, full circle. That's exactly right. So, so, so yeah, all is well. And um, how about everything here? We're doing great, aren't we? James keeps us all, keeps us all yeah, in line. Yeah, we're doing great, Jen. We're doing great. <laughs> we're, we're, everything's fine. Don't it's, worry about it's us. Great. It's great. Like, everything's been great since she left, Amanda. It's totally fine. Well, I miss you all. No, really we miss you really terribly. And, um, you know, I don't know. It's, it's very, very rarely that you find a group of people that mesh so well together yeah. and, um, it's still that way yeah. here, but you know we certainly miss you a lot. And had a good time. Yeah, we had a good time. Yeah, yeah we had sure. a lot of fun, and and um, so, but that's okay. You're, you're you know, we still see each that's other. That's right. right. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. I still stop in to see my keeps. Yes, that's but. that's so true. And how about Zip Systems and and printing, doing those T-shirts and all the great things that they do? I tell you what, without them, the like the brewery would not exist. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, they just are, talk about being there for the community. Anytime oh. you need something, they're just there, lickety split, um, getting stuff. In fact, I sent that t-shirt order on Friday because we have an event, a new hire event that's coming up in August, and we wanted to make sure we had the t-shirts. So sure. I thought, I'm going to go ahead and get partial order in to Rihanna and Stacy. Yeah. That way, they'll have plenty of time to get it done. I sent it Friday. Got a text from Rihanna last night. Hey, your t-shirts are done. That girl, so. I tell you what, she is um, a worker, yeah. and um, don't know what we'd do without her yeah. too okay. here and Stacy and all the gang. Um, but they are uh, they work really really hard. So if you need any printing done, I mean they do our menus for us, they do our signs for us, they do our mm-hmm. t-shirts for us. So yeah. I just wanted to give them a shout out too because um, they and, do and, an you know just if you're a, if you're a business that has giveaway items like they just custom made some shopping lists for us. You know like the pads of paper that are oh, shopping yeah, yeah. lists has our logo on it and people can we can give those out at festivals and yeah. Events. So so yeah, anything like that that you can think of cups, glasses, mugs, mm-hmm. like you yeah. know any of that stuff. Yeah. So I would be remiss yes. if I did not talk about the airport fly-in <gasps> is a week from Saturday. What? Yes. So um, it begins, um, we have a breakfast in the morning. If people want to come out like at 9, 10 o'clock, have breakfast. And then the, and then the fly-in, um, it's open to the public for a lot of the exhibits and things that'll be happening will be between 11 and three. So, so um, Butler County, Sh- County Sheriff's office is going to be there with some things, maybe a helicopter. i um, not sure what else they're going to be bringing, but the um, Paul Haller has um, talked to the army and they are going to be bringing in some things as well. So nice. Be some neat things there this year. And we really invite the public to come out. We'll have some food and drinks there and um, just come out and, and see the planes. I was amazed oh my gosh. last year at some of the planes that were there. I mean, we have 
people who build their own planes that come <laughs> that but like literally they have these planes that they built themselves yes. that are there to for you to look at. That is and then so we have crazy. small jets to look at. I mean it's just it's an it's a fun day. Um, and then we also will have Dewey Davenport will be there selling rides. So if you'd like to go up uh, in a biplane, eighty dollars for a, a ride in the airplane. Pretty so, neat. And yeah, you know what a fun way to look at the county in which we live uh, than from the air. No kidding. You know, we all yeah. go to you go to Columbus and you get on an airplane and you go up in the sky and we're like whatever. You're like you right. don't it doesn't mean anything to you. But to drive right. to fly around here and like lower at a low and, altitude and yeah. get to see the terrain. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah. So that is the thirteenth. Um again, you can come out for breakfast. And then if you want to stay um from eleven to three, we'll be having the exhibits there. So yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Very good. Well, that sounds like a blast. And uh, is there anything else before? I know you have to get back to. <laughs> She's like, well, I do have a call I here. Do a have a conference bit. call at ten thirty. <laughs> That's plenty of time and, to get to and MacArthur. Brandy's expecting me in MacArthur. I texted her and I said, "I'm just going to stop by Total Media really quick, and then I'll be on my way to MacArthur." <laughs> She's like, "Going, where is she? Is she lost again?" Because <laughs> it's so hard to get that you know straight shot down 93. Hey, listen, okay, I'm going to tell on myself. This is kind of a funny story. So Fourth of July parade in MacArthur. Yes, right. Um, so. so I plan to go up because the Vinton County National Bank, we carry this large flag, this huge flag through the parade. Okay. And it takes like 20 people to hold the flag and carry it through the parade. Okay. So I told Brandy and Heather, I said, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll drive up and I'll help. Sure. So I said, okay, where are we meeting? And Brandy said, you're going to meet, we're going to be on the corner of Spring and High. Spring and High. Spring and High. I thought, oh, Okay. I know where that is. I know where Spring Street is. I can get there. No problem. MacArthur's not that big. Yeah. We'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Yep. No problem. Oh, my goodness gracious. You got lost? So I got lost in MacArthur. <laughs> <laughs> so I pulled in. I walked to where I thought Spring Street was. Kept walking. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to have to intersect with High eventually, right? So I just keep walking. I don't see anybody. So I called Brandy and I said... Where are we meeting? She said Spring and High. And I'm like, I don't know which, like, half of the streets aren't marked. I don't know where I'm at. She said, Where are you? And I said, Well, I can see like McClure's. I'm, I'm back by Main Street. So she's like, Okay, we'll walk back there. And then when you get there, <laughs> take a left and keep following until you see the fire trucks. So I said, Okay. So I walked down, took a left, walked. I was darn near out of town. Still didn't see anybody. I was like, this cannot be. I'm looking at my GPS, but you know, like when you don't have great service, your map does not update yeah, really doesn't. quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then I was like turned around and looked, trying to get to north. And so then I just did this big circle and I finally got to High Street and thought, all right, if I go back toward town, I'm eventually going to get to Spring Street, right? Which I did, but I realized my mistake. So Spring Street... Spring Street Sports, I thought, was on Spring Street, but it is not. <laughs> no. So I went to Spring Street Sports thinking, okay, here's Spring Street's going to be right. That's Spring Street, right? Because it's Spring Street Sports. Yeah, no, that, that's not, it's not on Spring Street. So <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> so, well, they, they got big and they expanded they and they moved. And, okay. But they didn't change the name. <laughs> and I didn't know that because I'm not from MacArthur. So I just did. I was very, by the time I got there, I was melted. It was so <laughs> hot. My, feet, my hair was just plastered to my face. I said, all right, next time I'm going to MacArthur, landmarks. You yes. guys need to talk about Don't landmarks. give me intersections. Don't give me I intersections. Like the big rock down the street. Yeah. yeah how I get far that. is it from the traffic light? <laughs> yeah, right. Every time somebody gives directions to something in MacArthur, it's always, it's over by the traffic over light. Over by the traffic light. Well, it, is it, it downwind <laughs> of the traffic light or... <laughs> It occurred to me when I told Brandy where I was, I didn't tell her which side of the street I was on. So when she said go left, she, she thought I was on the other side of the street. Uh, I so. gotcha. <laughs> wow, that was just bad. <laughs> How do you get lost in my car? Though? I know. <laughs> hey. Uh, oh, wow. Only you. But it makes for a fun story. It does make for a fun story. 
I survived and it was a great event. So there you go. <laughs> there you That's go. all that we needed. <laughs> I'm actually usually really good with directions. So. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's awesome. All right. Well, we will let you get out of here for the day because we know that you have a meeting here in just a second mm-hmm. and um, you have to get all the way to MacArthur, hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> to do so. So let's head now to our uh, visit with the Highway Patrol Station because a lot of you uh, really enjoyed it. So if some of you didn't get to see it, here's our gift to you. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Jackson Post of the Ohio State Highway Patrol. And we are here this afternoon, actually, this is Friday afternoon, with uh, our friend Lieutenant Morgan, and we are at the open house. How's it going? Oh, it's so much fun. We've had more visitors than we expected. We didn't really know what to expect, but we've got a couple recruits in there. Our, Our SWAT team showed up. The motorcycle's here. There's a lot of people here. We are so excited because you promised me that I get to like honk a horn or oh, yeah. turn on a light or we'll something. Start it up as soon as we get done with this. All right, and the motorcycle unit just pulled in. The motorcycle's here. Uh, this is the demo car behind me. We're testing new light bars, uh, so you'll get to be one of the first first women, to, first civilians to test out this new light bar. That's so exciting! And what like what makes it special? So there are different LED lights, uh, the smaller smaller profile, lower profile, and the different LED Which lights. Which means they can be sneakier, That's right? That's right. <laughs> You'll see us later. But the, the, the LED lights are just going to be more visible at night and on and during the day. Okay. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's a lot better. And there's different packages for when we get out of the car. The light's not blinding us when we get out of the car. Um, just a lot of new features that we're just learning. You know, we keep learning when we, with this technology. Well, awesome. That sounds amazing. Well, I can't wait to play with all the all the, the toys. And, and there's a, like the SWAT vehicle That's over right. here. It looks really mean well, and there's nasty. There's one seat on the motorcycle. She can't get a motorcycle ride. <laughs> Drat. That's probably okay. <laughs> I'd be the first person to crash a highway patrolman. Um, but no, this is so exciting. So thank you for taking time once again to talk with us. And so we are going to begin our tour. And uh, thanks again for having this open house. And we can't wait. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Well, we have moved over to one of James and I, the, the thing that we were kind of interested in, and that is the motorcycle. And I'm here with Sergeant Deal. Mm-hmm. So thank you for talking with us this afternoon. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. And you drove down here all the way, though, from Franklin County. Am I correct? Columbus, yes. From Columbus. So, all right. So we, we do, you know, you just don't see down in our parts, mm-hmm. <laughs> down here in Appalachia, a lot of um, highway patrol motorcycles. Yes. So can we talk about that for a moment and like what makes um, a motorcycle, adv- what's advantageous about it for the state highway patrol? Okay. Well, right now we have two units. We have eight in Columbus and eight units in Cincinnati. And it was designed for the urban city areas during like rush hour and high impact traffic enforcement. And during rush hour and things, it's hard for cars to get around. So it just makes more sense to have motorcycles to get through traffic and for crashes and anything else that we need to do. You know, that makes sense because, you know, you can get bottlenecked pretty quick up on, on those major highways and uh, the motorcycles can get through a lot faster. So I totally get that. So what are, um, can, can the motorcycle do everything that the patrol car can do? We can pretty much do everything that a patrol car can. Uh, obviously, we don't have the transport capabilities. But well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Just strap them to the back. It's fine. <laughs> right, right. Um, but we uh, run radar, and we have laser in the side bag. So we can investigate crashes just like the car units can. Um, but obviously, there's more equipment in the cars and stuff. So mm-hmm. we're limited on what we can do. Well, very good. And so we were talking off off the camera about um, training and all of that. So how long has the Ohio State Highway Patrol had motorcycle divisions? We brought the motorcycle unit back in 2006. Okay. And like I said, it was for Cincinnati and Columbus areas. So there's eight in Columbus, eight in Cincinnati. Okay. And what did you have to do to train that you would have had to have done differently, you know, versus the car? Uh, Back in 2006, uh, we went to Canada to train with the Ontario police uh, for two weeks. And then every year, we have a 40-hour research week through Harley-Davidson Northwestern's training. Okay, now are are, are all the motorcycles Harleys? Yes, they are right now, but we will be getting BMWs in a few months. Ooh, okay. Well, 
in a few months, I'm going to have to interview you again, find out which one you like better. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. Um, well, thank you so much for talking with us. And, you know, this is amazing, and it's just such a great opportunity. Um, and thank you for letting us check out your motorcycle, because it's just not something that we get to see down here every day. Yes, thank you. All right. And, and uh, you be safe out on the road, okay? You as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see what else we can get into. All right, well, we have moved from motorcycles to, of course, my favorite. Well, I would like to say you're my favorite person, but my favorite here is Mr. Mickey, and he is down there. But uh, I am here with Matt Atwood, and you are Mickey's handler. Correct, yes. Well, thank you so much for talking with us, and it's so great to get to see Mickey today. And he is not mean by any chance. Uh, he does not, he's not like Cannibal Lecter or anything. We just... Our, that's just his uniform. Correct. That's just our policy. We just uh, we, we put the muzzle on him just to make sure that um, you never know when somebody's going to yank on their tail or tug on an ear. Other, he's not aggressive, but of course he would uh, be defensive if somebody was to hurt him or hurt me. So he just to make sure that he doesn't do that, we just keep the muzzle on him. Well, very good. Now, you and I were talking off the air, and I asked you, because your, your uniform's a little bit different, and of course you have the dog, so I was asking you, um, are you a patrolman or a trooper, like what is your title? Uh, so I'm a canine handler within our criminal interdiction unit, our criminal patrol unit. Uh, I am still a trooper. I do look a lot different. A lot of people don't think I'm a trooper when they see me, uh, but I am. We wear the different uniform just because we get, uh, we tend to get very dirty uh, with the uh -huh. dog, a lot of hair, a lot of dirt. Uh, we, we do a lot of tracking, narcotics work, um, evidence searches, uh, and what we call criminal apprehension, which is where we are able to use the dog to engage uh, suspects under certain conditions. Okay, so um, do you work out of this uh, Jackson patrol post or out of somewhere else? I work out of the Jackson district office. So um, our district office is conjoined with the Jackson post, but I'm actually uh, over 10 different counties in Southern wow. Ohio. So you could get called to any of those counties then, you and Mickey? I could, yes. Okay, so let's talk for a minute, and I don't want to, you know, like go into some, you know, 20 hour long thing, because I could talk to you that long about a dog, but um, let me ask you about what is different with like your training and like how does Mickey come to be? Did you choose to be a dog handler or how did that work? I did. So it started with an application process. I, I worked as a trooper for three years um, at a post, at our Gal Police post. Um, after that, there was an opening out of our Jackson district. Um, for a canine handler position, so I applied for that. I was given the position, and then we went through together a 10-week dog school. So he originally came from Germany, uh, and then we bought him through a vendor here in Ohio, and then we together, at that time, he had no training at all. Oh. <laughs> he knew absolutely nothing as well as I did about him. <laughs> Uh, so we learned together over a 10 week process, um, awesome. trained together, and then at the end of that 10 weeks, we both certified in uh, all of our certifications. So tell me, what are some of the things that Mickey, Mickey does? Like, what does his day look like? So his day is he rides with me. We uh, typically work on the major highway routes um, that are used for drug traffickers through Ohio. Um, we'll sit on that and we try to interdict any criminals that we do see come across. Um, so his primary use is narcotics, um, narcotic sniffs of vehicles, uh, narcotics detection. Outside of that, we do a lot of um, tracking. So if we have a suspect or even um, somebody that uh, is missing or has left someplace where they, they mm -hmm. um, should be, mm -hmm. he can be used to track. Um, okay. He can also be used to find articles, which is uh, like say somebody throws a gun after uh, a horrific crime and nobody okay. can find the gun, he can be actually used to search an area and locate any item on the side of the road or a field or anywhere at all. So That is so cool. He must have a good nose. Oh, a great nose. Yeah. Excellent. You can't get along with any, uh, get away with anything, can you? No, no, you can't get anything <laughs> past him. That's so awesome. And so Mickey, um, like what are, what's like the craziest thing he's ever gotten into or that you've gotten him into or we've gotten him into? Uh, you know what? It seems like it's more what he gets me into. It's, <laughs> it seems like I can't tell you how many times we've been through the mud or through, uh, I can't tell you how many spider webs I've had in my face. And he's actually a few times, he's, he's so excited to work. He ends up rolling me down the hill and everything. It's, it's a, it's a fun day. It's a fun day. It's, uh, that's why we get these nice uniforms to get dirty versus our pretty uniforms there. But he, he gets me into the trouble is what it ends up being. 
he's telling tales on you. I think you're a precious angel. So what makes, um, like, what made Mickey a candidate to be a police dog? That They go through a, um, a long selection process. What happens is, in Germany, they're, they're picked out of um, these, these groups of dogs that are bred through uh, his, historical lines of the work that they go through. Okay. And then they're, dis, they're picked over there, by, and then they're sent here to vendors in the United States, and then we actually will go to those vendors and put them through a selection process, which is it's where they, it's just pretty much testing their natural instincts and what that drives them mm-hmm. and motivates them. Because we all know, like, uh, I've got a house dog that doesn't want to do anything. It wants yeah. to lay on the couch and eat its, mean- eat its few meals <laughs> and get pet and its belly rubbed. And there's dogs like him that um, their whole motivation is to work. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just to pretty much find out, does that dog like to work or does that dog like to lay around? And he's, <laughs> he is a worker. Well, I don't have one of those at my house. No. I, I have the lay around kind. Yeah, yeah I've got one of those myself. <laughs> So how does he differentiate between when he can be a dog, Mickey, and when he's at work, Mickey? Uh, it pretty much just comes. He, he realizes uh, we've been together for uh, about five years now. Okay. And so he knows just as well as uh, anybody else. When I start getting dressed, when I start getting my uniform on, when I start putting his gear on on him, um, he knows that he's going into work mode. Mm-hmm. And then he, he's, he keeps that level-headed um, work drive and then as soon as we get home and it all comes off he just becomes a normal dog for the, for the rest of the day until it's time to go back to work. That just blows my mind it's, that they know that. It's pretty amazing. It, it is amazing to see. Well he is beautiful and uh, thank you so much for sharing him with us and, and telling his story because and your story because I think that's fantastic. Yeah thank you. All right let's go out and see what else we can find. Thank you Mickey. <laughs> All right, so we've gone from the dog, which we loved, but this is really cool as well. We are in an actual SWAT vehicle, and uh, I've never, thank God, I guess, been in the back of one of these things before. But, uh, no, I am here with Trooper Danny, and you are part of the, you told me, SRT team, right? Yes, it's a special response team. That's right, and that's with the Highway Patrol, though. Yes. Okay, so we're going to call it SWAT because that's what people know. Is that okay? That's, That's fine. Okay, and Trooper Danny is super excited to talk with us today, and he's going to tell us like about this vehicle because we're in the back, but there's you know, we're sitting on benches in the back of this big vehicle. It looks like something like the Rock would would drive, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or they, James, you're aging yourself. You said the A team. <laughs> I don't. I think that's not as new as the Rock, but uh, no. So, Danny, tell us um, a little bit about what makes this vehicle special. All right. So this is our. We call it our Bear. It's an up-armored vehicle, so, I mean, it's special because it keeps the team safe. Um, and it has, like, armor around it's, it. It's up-armored, um, so you can't shoot through it. Uh, you can shoot out of it, but you can't shoot if someone's shooting from the outside. It's not going to hurt anyone from the inside. Okay. It's also just big, so it's a show of force. So, naturally, if you see a police cruiser, you might think, ah, okay. But if you see a big vehicle Mm -hmm. like okay they're pretty serious yes so that's why it's special well i'm going to tell you what if i saw this thing coming at me i would just lay down and die so that's okay (laughs) um but no so there there's like so people can't shoot into this vehicle which is really really cool so you guys are protected and there's room for how many people back here uh you fit as many as you can fit uh you know eight ten guys comfortably there's two bench seats Uh, of course you have a driver but um yeah you can fit a bunch of guys back here. Do you draw straws as to who gets to drive? Uh, no straws. Drat. Okay. So now I see, like, is this where you could shoot out of, like, yes. this whole thing? So these are... Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> these are windows, and you just would, you know, pop them out like... You would pop them out like that. And that is that so cool. You can get a gun out um, or get air. Air's good. Yeah, yeah. Air's real good. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and there's several on the walls there. Um, yeah, they just pop pop out like that. So, so how did you get involved in in this? I mean, you started out actually at the Jackson Post, right? Correct. I did. So, how did you get involved in the SRT team? Um, so, our team, uh, whenever the state approves it, we have a tryout. So whenever the team would lose a couple guys to retirement or promotion, um, 
we would have a selection process with a tryout, and I just tried out and got on the team. So what made you uh, want to be different, do something different like this? Who wouldn't want to do this job? <laughs> I like his answer. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Morgan actually pulled me aside one day and mentioned it. Um, uh-huh. He, you know, he mentioned it, so I can give him a little bit of credit. Uh, I had thought about it, and then, yeah, that's it. I love that. So now are you based out of Columbus? Yeah, so our main office is in Columbus, but we are we have guys all over the state, so uh, we can respond anywhere. But this vehicle specifically stays in Columbus. Okay, so I just have, like, another question. So when would you guys get called out? I mean, obviously there's all kind of situations that happen, but I feel like you kind of are, like, not the last resort, but it would have to escalate into something before you guys get called out. Sure, so our team, uh, as far as call-outs go, um, you name it, uh, a manhunt, uh, a barricade, um, an arrest warrant that's a high profile or even search warrants, you know, but after hours, anything active. So, you know, someone fleeing, uh, with a gun or a barricade, um, just anything like that would be an actual call out. Um, we don't just do call outs. We're actually a full-time SWAT team. So in the meantime, we're serving arrest warrants, um, training, uh, we do all kinds of things. So we assist with security at the governor's, uh, at the state house, just anything and everything. That sounds, no wonder you really like your job. That's like really, really um, exciting and like, like different things every day. There's something new generally every day. Yep. Well, very good. Well, thank you for talking with us and thank you for coming to the open house and, and uh, coming back to your home base. That's pretty neat. I'm sure to visit. Thank you. All right, and uh, this vehicle is pretty darn cool. Okay, I have one last question. There's like a hatch right there. Yep. That looks like something that Vin Diesel would jump out in, in Fast and Furious. So what is that for? Yeah, so that's, that's a turret. So when we would use that, we would have a guy. Say we were serving an arrest warrant, um, and we pull up into the driveway. All the guys are in the back. We'd pop that turret and have a guy up there just with a rifle. You know, he's kind of shielded by the hatch of that just so he can, you know, he's up higher and has some elevation and some another set of eyes okay. to kind of protect the guys as they move up to the door. Okay. So like a higher vantage point and then he has, um, he can watch over everybody. Yep. That's really cool. Yep. All right. Well, thanks for talking with us and we appreciate you so much for what you do. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's head back in. Are we going to go play with a police car now? I think so. I think so. Are we going to play with a police car? Yes, okay. Lieutenant Morgan says so. I'm super excited. He doesn't know what he's gotten himself into letting me do that. <laughs> All right. Well, that was really fun learning about SWAT. Are you going to do that next? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, they have cool equipment, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not that, uh, that cool. So. <laughs> well, I think there's some pretty cool equipment in here. And again, we're here with our friend Tawana uh, Hutton and... Uh, Trooper Hutton here has been so gracious as to let James and I crash one of these vehicles. And this is actually a new test vehicle, so some of the things are a little bit different. So bear with us as we're trying to figure out how to push all the buttons. We'll figure it out together. <laughs> yes, correct. Yeah, so this is, a, I just got in this car this morning for the first time. It's, I mean, it's similar to what I have, but not exactly. So I had to have the radio guy kind of show me some of the new features. But that's really cool because you have to stick up, you know, how you have to keep up with technology. Yes. Yes. So, and the air works. <laughs> the air does work. But yeah, so I think their goal is just to minimize this section here of just so many things that we have to touch. So it just keeps getting smaller and smaller. So I think when I first started, it started here and went like all the way back here. And it oh. just keeps getting smaller over the years. So. Now listen, we're not supposed to be out distracted driving and you guys have all these <laughs> buttons in here to push. What yeah. the heck? <laughs> uh, it becomes second nature. Like seriously, sometimes you don't even realize you're doing it. So. Well, very good. Well, let's start with this car because I am sitting here and this ginormous computer screen thingy is right <laughs> here and it's not turned on because, you know, I'm not a fugitive from the law and you're not looking me up, I think. So right. what do you use this computer for? So this computer, um, eventually at some point we are going to be able to take this off. This is actually a tablet con connected to the, um, the pad here, but we'll be able to take it off. 
uh, take pictures at uh, crash scenes and different things oh. like that. But so w the main thing that we use it for is traffic stop. So when we're getting ready to go to stop with the car, we'll just hit a button that says traffic stop. It lets dispatch know that it puts in our GPS where we are and then we give them the license plate number and then they'll connect all of that okay. to the traffic stop and then um, they'll, uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> but yeah, so the, all of that information will be in there. Yeah. And then, so then we can run it ourselves as well once we get the car stopped. So I typically don't put any information in here while I'm driving. I normally do that when I'm stopped, if I want to put a license plate number. So say I stop a car and the owner is not with the car. Okay. And so I'm going to run somebody else's information. I'll run that and then all of their information comes back and then I can read through it. Do they have valid driver's license? Do they have um, any warrants, anything like that? So, But okay. it all comes back right there on the screen and their picture comes back as well. We didn't used to have that a long time ago, but okay. in the last few years that became something else that we have. So, so then somebody can't say there's somebody else. Exactly. Okay, so you pull Jen over, you put in my license plate mm -hmm. number and all the Jen bad stuff comes up. Yes, <laughs> they won't be doing that stuff. But yes, so it would all come back on there. So and it'll tell. It, so whatever the BMV puts into your driving record is what we're gonna see. Okay. So I gotcha. if you've been convicted of something, not uh, um, whatever, it's all gonna be in there. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so very cool. And also, so um, if we get a dispatch to a call, a crash, whatever, that just comes across the screen. Okay. Um, we'll put our self and route to it. Uh, we can get gps directions it'll tell us how to get there if it's someplace we're not familiar with all of that on there um but it does it, it does all kinds of things okay so, so it's but, just a huge tool that you mm -hmm. use every day every day yep so that's the one we use the most okay so then you have the radio what do you use the radio for so radio is just talking back and forth between dispatch um or other troopers so that's a pretty simple one are you ever like, hey, what are we having for you know, like lunch? <laughs> no. or? So there are certain things you can't. Well, it's hot out say. here today. <laughs> <laughs> so certain things you can and cannot say on the radio. Okay, so gotcha. We can't, we can't ask that. Normally we just meet up with each other or we discuss that before work. But <laughs> I'm yeah. just kidding you. Um, okay, so then there's a lot of other buttons down this direction, and so you, you know, police cars have sirens and they have obviously the speed detector, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but what are some of the things that this thing does? So, this, like we said, this is a test car. So I was talking to our radio technician and he said that the state is currently testing three different light bar systems. Okay. This is one of them. I guess the Chillicothe Post, um, they have a day shift unit and a night shift unit that are taking turns. One has it for one week and then the, a night shift unit has gotcha. another week. So just testing them to see what they think works best, what the lighting conditions are like. but. So like I was saying, I had him kind of go through it with me. It was a little bit confusing because this one is not ex like mine um, <laughs> other than this right here. So just turns on the lights. Um, like, is that the light bar? Light bar. <gasps> so when you're getting pulled fun. over. Oh, no, that's not fun. Yeah. I mean, it's fun for you, not for. <laughs> so it does some different things. And then um, this one they added a few years ago. So like an arrow button. So if. Like if we have a lane stopped or something and we're telling people to go to the left or right, I see. that's basically that's what smart. that arrow bar is for. And then sirens and stuff. And, and the radio technician was telling me, and I don't remember exactly how it works, but this one of the new features on this is, um, I think he's, the hands free. He said, so if it's in that mode and you have your lights running, you just push the horn <gasps> and the siren comes on. Can we do it? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> let's try it. <laughs> He's not here. He, he won't care. Lieutenant. He doesn't hear me. So can we honk the horn? The thing? siren. Okay. The si he said yes. Okay. <laughs> so I think I'm doing this correctly. Or maybe not. <laughs> okay. Maybe not. Let's see. Let's just do it this We're way. We're figuring it out. Is, oh, it has to be a neutral. Okay. Gotcha. See, I'm burning. I don't know. That's okay. okay. And then, I can't even reach the. I was gonna say here. some tall person's been <laughs> Not driving my this. Car. Let me scoot up there. Okay. So let's give it a try. Oh my gosh! Here we go. It's gonna be loud. Okay. Good. <laughs> nice. So it's not gonna That's stay so on. fun. I don't know how to make it stay on, but even then you push the siren. This actual siren button. Yeah. 
Let's see. Where's Which the siren button? Siren? There's... <gasps> there we go. Okay. So fun! Okay. Okay. So we did that. There we go. So tell us the difference. What's what's the difference between? See, I tried that. It. I couldn't get it to work. Okay. Okay. I didn't do it right. But. We're, you're good. No, you're good. You totally. We made noises, and that's the whole point. So what do you use the different like the like one that different like sounds. goes honk versus so, like the woo woo woo? Honestly, so really the the monotonous sound mm -hmm. of one or the other just to change up the sound so, oh okay and sometimes i think people are used to one noise or another so i just get tired of hearing one sound <laughs> so then you just want to switch or and then if i'm going through an intersection if i'm going to a call i will slow way down and then air horn through it and yes. i'm looking Smart. at everybody to make sure that they see that i'm coming through if it's a red light or something because like some people so. are just again distracted yes. in la la land oh yes always yeah very much yeah. so so and okay. then um this is the radar. Yes, so, so how does that how work? we check people when they're speeding. Um, it is not on currently, but. Hey, Jen, get out so and run I was gonna to say, it. James, run by there and see what, see what happens. <laughs> yeah, so um, I noticed that the back unit, I, I guess it's plugged in, it's just in a weird spot. So normally they're mounted to the light bar or some people have them up in the dash, but this is the actual thing that is reading the speed. So the Doppler, okay and it's shooting out a uh, frequency and then it's coming back to this machine. Okay. So, and a lot of times people ask when I pull them over, uh, you checked me going the opposite direction, travel, you know, driving at each other. Sure. That's how it works. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so the, basically whatever car is pushing the, the most energy at you is going to be the one that this machine is picking so up. So that was going to be my question. How do you know who, what car you're actually like yes. looking at? So one of the things though, so this machine, we don't use it until we already estimate, visually estimate the speed. So that's something we learn in the academy and we train on it all the time. I see. So we look at the car after doing it for a while, you just learn how fast vehicles are going you turn the machine on to confirm that speed. Okay. So when you have to be um, like plus or minus a couple miles uh, within that range to, to know. But okay. after doing it for years, you, you, you have, just know. You just know, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but so this machine can check stationary. So if I'm sitting in a crossover, cars coming at me, mm -hmm. can check it that way. There's a moving mode, so cars passing each other. And then you can also pace a car. So get behind them. Um, and then turn the uh, machine to a pace m mode that's on here. Mm -hmm. And then as long as your speed is staying steady on the screen, you'll know that that's the speed that you're going and that they are going. Okay. So we don't use that too, too often. Yeah, because um, when you're behind them, they're gonna yeah. figure out that they yes. probably need to slow down yeah. by then. So, but usually, um, but there are people that still will speed, but even though <laughs> they'll be just looking attention. in the mirror at you like, <laughs> Why are you behind me like this? So, but I, I had to put my lipstick on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but that is the other thing. And then that is awesome. Yeah. So, and then this car, most cars have a cage. So yes. if you have a prisoner, yeah. um, they would be back behind the cage Sure. because this is a test car. It doesn't have that. So you would put the prisoner here. Okay. And then they're equipped for, um, the cars have the shotgun in the front, which this one does not have it. But, and then in the back uh, of this vehicle would be a rifle. So, and then other equipment back there, we have, um, you know, cones, tape measures, anything that you would need at um, different types of scenes, crash scenes, crime scenes, all of that stuff. Awesome. So a tr the trunks are usually completely full yes. of, of gear. Stuff. Yes. Again, this one, not so much because it's a new car, but yeah. they usually do. Well, so. very good. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking oh, a tour yes. of the car. I mean, I've never, thank God, ever been in one of these before, <laughs> nor do I ever want to be in one ever again. It's okay. It's not always bad because a lot of times, um, so you may just have to sit in the car to help, like, with a, a crash sure. report or something. Yeah, so, you, as a people, witness or yes, something. People say that all the time. I've never sat in a car. I'm like, you're not in trouble. This is my office. I need you to sit here so I can <laughs> ask you some questions. So. 
Well, very yeah. good. Well, thank you so much. And um, we, uh, this is Tawana Hutton once again, and we appreciate you taking time. You've had to deal with me twice this week. Yeah, this has been fine. so much fun. It is fine, though. You're good. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Well, James, let's see what else we can get ourselves into. All right. Well, we just had so much fun out in the police car. I got to push all the buttons and stuff. It was really fun. But we are here now with Trooper McIntyre, and you are actually helping out with some recruiting for the State Highway Patrol. Yes. So thank you for that, and thanks for being on our program this morning. Thank you for having me. Can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, I guess? Are you from around the area? No, I'm not. I'm actually a Southwest recruiter, and I'm based out of Columbus, but I live in Cincinnati. Okay, well, that makes total sense. And um, so let's talk for a minute about the Highway Patrol, because I can remember growing up, and I had some friends, some guy friends, especially that, you know, when I was in school a few years ago, where that's what we say, a few yes. years ago, because, right. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that... Um, no, it was really hard to get. You couldn't get into the patrol academy unless you knew somebody. I mean, it was really tough. And so now, but you guys are actually looking for some recruits right now. And so the tables have turned a little bit, and that's not due to anything other than that's just how it is right now. So let's talk about the patrol academy, recruitment, all that. Okay. Yeah, so right now, of course, we are hiring. We are looking for people that are from 20 to 34 years of age, have a high school diploma, GED, being a United States citizen and having a valid license, no more than five points. We do have paid training, which is $18.66 an hour, plus full benefits. So that's an incentive to people. Mm -hmm. And we, um, just like anybody else, we're hurting just like anyone, mm -hmm. other law enforcement agencies and even businesses and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so if you are thinking about, you know, maybe you just graduated high school, maybe, you know, you're in college and you're thinking, I don't know what I'm doing here. This is not for me. Uh, how about law enforcement? I could be a highway patrolman. I could get paid to get trained. I mean, how often does that happen? Exactly. And that's what I try to tell people. I mean, it's a wonderful position. It puts you in places you never thought you would be. And nothing is never the same when you're out on the road, work, working the road. And there's so many other areas that the patrol that you can go into other than just being an officer out on the roadway. You know, we tried to showcase a little bit of that today um, with SWAT and, and our dog handler and, you know, things like that. But let's talk about some of the, you know, we're inside the post right now. And there are people that work inside this post that are not patrolmen that, or women that aren't out on the road. So could you talk about some of the jobs that maybe somebody could get into if they just, or maybe they're not physically capable of, of going through the academy or something, but they still want to be involved? Right. Well, we have dispatchers, secretaries. But again, what, of course, I'm looking for are people that do want to become state troopers mm -hmm. and they have to recruit for their areas. Okay. So what I'm saying is we also run just like a business. So we have operations, we have logistics, um, finance. So as I said before, there are other areas that you can go into. Mm -hmm. But yes, at the main post, we have secretaries and there's also dispatchers, depending on where you are. All right. And so within then um, the troopers, like they were telling me, and you just t um, touched on it, but like, you know, computer people and, and all this wild stuff that you would have never thought of. That's so neat. Yes, we are in-house. We do everything. And that's one thing I'm grateful for um, working with this organization is that we pretty much do it all. And uh, that's what we have to offer that other local PDs and whatnot don't because there's so much that you can do and get involved in and bring out your talents that you never thought that you could use. You know, it's like show your stuff, right? Like you, sometimes you, you draw it out that you didn't even know you had within yourself. Yes, and we try to get that also while they're in the academy. Our academy is 24 to 26 weeks long, mm -hmm. and the first thing that people have to do, of course, is fill out an application. They take a written exam, do the physical, then they'll have polygraph, background, drug screen, psychological, and then another um, physical test that they'll have to take before they come into the pat patrol. Mm -hmm. But that's what we want to get out of our people the best mm -hmm. because they don't know what they're going to be dealing with, too. So th some things are rough, but it's to get the best out of you. And I think that goes throughout your career. You know, and I, I kind of think of that. I had some friends that went into the military that, shall we say, had they not, I think their lives would have been questionable, uh, their futures. Um, and, and the military, you know, turn them into the person that I, you know, you can see deep down that they are. And I feel like it's that way with the patrol as well. 
Yes, it is. And we have now started to a mentor program. So somebody that can kind of stay with you if you have questions or concerns. I know it wasn't around when I first came on. Mm -hmm. Probably it's it's very helpful to have a mentor. I don't care what it is that you really want to go into. Mm -hmm. Um, Just having somebody that's been there, done that, and it can help you along the way to get to where you need to be or want to be. Absolutely. And then uh, they were telling me, um, Lieutenant Morgan uh, was telling me when he was on the show the other day that they have like a ride along program too, where people could come out. Maybe you're thinking about it. Maybe I don't know if this is right for me or not, but you could actually ride around with a trooper. Yes, you can. It didn't used to be like that, especially during the pandemic. We had Mm. shut that down, but now it's open and it's better than it was before. So basically, if you want to do a ride along, get in touch with the local post where you are. And ask or tell them that you would like or you're interested in, I mean, doing a ride along and then you'll have an interview with that post commander. Mm -hmm. And then if he feels he or she feels that you're a perfect fit, he'll give you the paperwork. He or she will give you the paperwork and move on to the next step of driving with a patrol officer. Now, that would be I mean, it doesn't get any better than that of figuring out whether you want to if you're right for the job or not. Right. (laughs) Correct. And exactly. And that's that's right. Hands on. Mm -hmm. And we also do that. Of course, once you get into the um, academy, you have those times to come out and ride along as well with the officer, too, to just get a feel what it's going to be like. Well, very good. And um, what would you say to someone as a patrolman or what do you patrol say? Woman. Do you say patrol woman? <laughs> I love that. Right? Go, girl. I knew I liked you for a reason. Um, so what would you say to somebody that's out there watching this today and maybe questioning? I don't I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe not. What would you say? What, is, what does the patrol mean to you? Um, it is a calling. It's not for everybody. Everybody has a place and purpose in this world. And so sometimes they feel they might get in and feel like it's not a perfect fit, but at least they realize it at that time. But I will tell you, in this type of position, it puts you in places in, in front of people you never thought you would be, like presidents, celebrities, or what have you. Right. Yes. So, and you never know what, what's down the line, those, those connections that you make. So, as I said, every day is not the same day. You're out there stopping people. You never know who you're going to stop. So, it's a wonderful thing. I mean, you, you never know. You might meet your favorite celebrity. Yes. <laughs> or even a husband or wife. I don't know. <laughs> you just don't know. You don't. You don't. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. And it means so much to us. And um, again, uh, patrol, we're going to say woman, McIntyre. Thank yeah. you. And welcome to our area. We're so glad that, that you stopped by today yeah, and, uh, and safe travels back. Well, thank you so much. And thanks again. All right. Well, what a fun visit to the Jackson Post of the Highway Patrol. Thank you so much for having us out today. It was so fun. You know, I, we put some guys on the spot and they got to talk and put them, made them a little uncomfortable talking about themselves. Uh, but they're, they're doing great. I mean, these guys need, they need recognized for what they do because they do. they're all doing phenomenal jobs uh, and they just do it. Like they don't want anything extra. They just want to go do their jobs. And, and having you guys out here recognize what they do is so great. It's so awesome. Well, I think it's very important, and uh, we have enjoyed ourselves so much. And getting to see like what the what the daily life of a patrolman is like is is just something that you don't think about. So, coming out here, getting to see the different facets of, of what all you get to do, um, that was amazing. And this is a perfect opportunity with the open house. So, thank you. Thank you so much. We there were several candidates that came through that were interested that we got them enrolled in the application process, and and that's that was kind of one of the goals, you know, yeah. to see what we do and maybe uh, have one of the, a young person come in and find a job, a career in the Highway Patrol. So you, we accomplished our goals today. That's right. And and again, recruits are uh, still welcome. And please, if you're thinking about a career in law enforcement or the Highway Patrol, uh, stop on out by the patrol post anytime mm-hmm. and, and um, see Lieutenant Morgan or, or one of the gang and you guys will put them in the right direction. Absolutely. We're all here. See? You never get to leave, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. I was here late yesterday too, so yeah, it's fun. And but but this is what we do, you know. Yeah. Uh, my family, my, the family gets it. You know, when I get home, I'm home, and when I'm not, they know where I am. So I can't, I can't hide anywhere. <laughs> So, but yeah, we love We'll it. find you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. And um, we appreciate the tour and everybody giving up their time today to talk to us. So thank you. And we will head back to the studio.